Hey everybody, it's Lon Saib and it's time once again for your weekly wrap up and this week we're going to continue our discussion of subscription services and point our attention at what I'm paying for for the business here, the YouTube business. Let's get to it. Now, about two weeks ago, we talked about some of the things that I am subscribed to on the personal side, like Netflix and Prime Video and Disney Plus. You can check out uh, that video linked in the video description. But this week, we're going to talk about what I'm doing on the business side, because some of you were interested in hearing about that. So I thought I would go through all the different things that I'm using. And when I talk about the business, I mean the YouTube channel, because this is a business. We have employees, we have revenue, we have expenses, we pay taxes. And there's a lot of things that go into running a business, especially a small business, that often take you, the business owner, off your core mission because you have to do all the paperwork and everything. So what I always look for are things that can help keep me in this chair producing videos. And if that costs something, then it's probably worth paying for because I make more money sitting here making videos than I do filling out paperwork or solving IT problems. And that's why I often don't roll a lot of my own solutions, although I've started doing that. And I'll go through some examples where I have uh, decided not to pay for something and do it myself. Now, the first thing that I'm paying for is G Suite. Now I believe it's called Google Workspace. And this is the commercial version of Google's apps. And that includes, of course, Gmail and Google Docs and spreadsheets. And what I like about the Google package is that for, a, I think, a pretty reasonable subscription price, for me, I'm on the starter plan here at six bucks a month per account, you get a lot of value because everything that they offer are things that are similar to other services that you might pay for separately. So they have a Zoom equivalent through Google Meet that I use quite a bit. They have a Slack equivalent. They've got a Dropbox equivalent. So all the things, like I said, you would be paying for separately, you can often save some money by going into Google. And the reason why I use the commercial account is that I wanted to separate my personal stuff from the business stuff. That's important for a whole host of reasons. And I have a lon.tv domain for my email. So when I log into the company Gmail, uh, the email that comes in is going to the lon.tv domain for me, along with James and Jake, who help me here on the channel and our employees. So whenever they are communicating with, an, with a company on my behalf, it's not coming from their personal Gmail. It's coming from my domain. And yes, you could set up forwarders and everything. I've done that in the past. But there's always things that glitch and just don't make it work right. And I just wanted something that was going to work. So we've got three accounts here on the business starter plan. We're paying about 18 bucks a month. My one gripe with Google is that if I wanted more storage space beyond the 30 gigabytes on an account, I have to upgrade everybody. And that's been the one thing that uh, I am not happy about because if I just needed some extra space on my account, Jake and James who don't need it would also have to get loaded into that other plan here. And that would of course double my monthly cost. So that's the one issue with it. Uh, but other than that, I think it's pretty good. And yeah, you know, the security is good on the email. And one of the things that I found with Google uh, from my prior job where we were a much, much bigger company is that when I moved about 50 or 60 users over to Google's suite or whatever it was called back then, it cut down on a lot of our IT overhead because all the things that we were you know, kind of stamping out all day long, all those little fires that erupt in different areas of the servers we were operating suddenly were not a problem anymore because it was on Google side now. You know, we moved all of our files into Google Drive and people were using Google Docs and the email was filtering out spam and catching some of the malware that was coming in through phishing emails and stuff. And it was a real nice thing for the department, even though we were paying a lot per month, it was saving us from having to hire more people or direct our resources into things that uh, were taking time away from other things that were important for the business. So I think it's a good investment and I am a pretty happy customer uh, with Google Workspace. Now the next thing that I'm paying for is an annual license renewal fee for the vMix software that I'm using. vMix is an incredible piece of software. This is what I'm using right now to make this production and everything else that I use here on the channel. I recently switched away from the TriCaster to vMix and I'm going to do a whole video on on how vMix works in the next couple of weeks here. And what they do is they charge you a licensing fee for the version that you pick. They have a couple different versions based on what you're gonna do. And then beyond that, you pay $60 a year 
to get version upgrades, which I think is very, very reasonable. And this is an optional thing. You don't have to pay for the update, uh, but it's something that if you are using vMix for your production environment, it's certainly worth doing. And the ROI on vMix for me has been uh, very quick. So it's something that I am certainly happy to keep paying for. And again, we'll talk more about vMix in the coming weeks. Uh, the next thing that I use quite a bit is something called Zapier, or Zapier, I guess. And this is kind of like IFTTT, but it goes beyond that. Let me show you what I'm using it for. Now, what I've done in Zapier is I have it looking at my YouTube channel's RSS feed. And believe it or not, every YouTube channel has an RSS feed that you can use to bring into things like Zapier or your own tools. And what happens here is that every time my channel adds a new video to the feed, and this can be either this channel or my extras channel, the first thing it does here is it grabs the content and then makes a tweet that it drops into Buffer. And I'm using a free plan on Buffer. Now, if you haven't heard of Buffer, uh, it is a, a little social media utility that allows you to queue up tweets and other posts so that you're not posting one thing right after the other. I think Buffer will post like five or six times a day. And every time I post a new video, either here or on the Extras channel, it'll drop a bunch of data into Buffer and then it will tweet out according to that schedule. And one of the cool things about how this works is that I can have the uh, tweet kind of get formed here based on some static text like, hey, check out my latest video. And then it pulls in the title from the RSS feed. It pulls in the link from the RSS feed. And then I'm also able to grab an image uh, based on what I know about the YouTube URLs for thumbnails. So you can see it's pulling in just the video ID and inserting it in between these two pieces of static text. And then it creates a, a thumbnail along with a video link for Twitter, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other thing it does here is it creates a spreadsheet row uh, on a spreadsheet that Jake, James, and I use to manage video here on the channel. So what happens is, is that after I upload a video to one of those channels, it will drop a uh, title here into the title. We'll get the link to the video. And then uh, it also gives us the ability to go through and make sure that we've posted it to Facebook, to Amazon, to Plex, and then have backed it up. Uh, I also make sure that it gets registered with content ID so I can protect my content. And this allows us to keep track of everything. And that way, if uh, James is not available to do something and Jake is, one of us can do something and check it off in the spreadsheet that we're all watching. But I don't have to do any of this because once the video is posted, it will create that buffer. It will then add the line to the spreadsheet. It's going to then share a link to the video on my Facebook page and on LinkedIn. And I actually get a good amount of traffic from the LinkedIn stuff here, which is awesome. Now you'll also notice there are four additional tasks here that happen in the course of this thing getting executed, which is to send some things over to an app called FreedCamp. And we were using this for a little while, but we found the spreadsheet to be easier to manage. So we're probably gonna take off all these uh, freed camp things, but I am talking about it because I think this is a really good alternative to a subscription task management system that you might be looking at. Uh, this is again called freed camp, totally free. You get a lot of features that you'll get out of Basecamp and a few of the other services that are out there. And if you're a small operation and you've got a lot of people working remotely, this is a really cool system that I think is worth taking a look at because one of the neat things about how it integrates with Zapier is that I was able to drop tasks into specific projects and then assign it to specific people from here, which is awesome. Uh, so for example, if we go into setup action here, you can see what it's doing. Uh, so I attached my, uh, my FreedCamp account to Zapier and I can assign the task here. I can give it to a specific user to do. Uh, right now, it doesn't have one assigned, but I could assign it to me, Jake, or James, and it would just send them an email and just kind of manage the whole process. So if you've been really struggling to uh, keep up with assigning tasks to people, this is great because this is a workflow that gets created every time a video is created, and it just drops it right in. And again, the spreadsheet for us is easier for the things that we do, but it's something I think worth looking at. And again, FreedCamp, uh, right here is really worth looking at, uh, especially if you don't want to pay for a task manager. And the last thing it does here is it creates a task in my personal task manager that runs on my Mac called OmniFocus. And this actually works via an email inbox bucket that it creates. And what I do with this task is uh, set up content ID 
for all the videos that I upload. And I am very, very careful with Content ID because you have the power when you're in the system to take down other people's videos. And one of the issues that I deal with quite a bit here on the channel is that people take my content and then re-upload it and put their own Amazon affiliate links on my video, basically stealing my content and revenue. Uh, so I'm often going through and removing those videos, but I really want to be careful about it because I do a lot of things where we might be capturing game footage or looking at a website, and that's content that a lot of other people might be uploading as well, and I don't want to take down videos that don't belong to me. So I'm really, really careful. So I just set up this thing in OmniFocus to give me a list of what videos I need to go through of mine uh, to set up properly in the system, because I can exclude portions of content that I did not create, but keep the things that I did. And I don't want to lose track of those videos because I'm often uh, doing this maybe once every two weeks or so, and I might have 14 or 15 videos to go through. So that's why I set that up there. So Zapier has been really helpful in automating some things that were falling through the cracks. We were forgetting to back stuff up. We were forgetting to post things on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter every time they got up there. And this really was able to consolidate everything and take it off my hands so I didn't have to think about it anymore, which is great. Uh, the one thing, though, is that Zapier is expensive. I did an annual plan, and I'm kind of grandfathered in, uh, so I'm going to stay put for a while. But the starter plan uh, gives you about 750 tasks per month. And a task is one of those steps in each of those zaps that I was showing you. So you could very easily go through your allocation pretty quickly if you start automating a lot of stuff. And I've got to really reevaluate whether or not this is worth it. My next uh, billing month is in July, so I've got some time to figure things out. And I'm not using it as much as I really should be because there's a lot of power in Zapier, and I'm sure there's things I could automate that I just haven't thought about yet. So I need to really do a good audit of this one to figure out if it's worth it. The other reason I want to take a closer look is that IFTTT now offers similar uh, multi-step tasks that it can do. When I first subscribed to Zapier, IFTTT did not do that. You had to set up a separate task for each one of those items. Uh, but now they're doing more programmatic things, and you can do if and thens and all the other cool stuff that uh, Zapier can do. And IFTTT is a lot less expensive. And on the YouTube side, it supports more things than Zapier currently supports. So I'm going to be taking a very serious look at the pro service here on IFTTT to see if I can do the same things for less money. All right, next up is something that we've talked about quite a bit here on the channel over the last couple of weeks, and that is my shadow server. It is a Windows 10 computer operating in a remote data center, and I can log into it from here and test things that use the internet. So rather than leaving the house or setting up a cellular connection to see how maybe some NAS device works over the internet, I can just log into the shadow server right here on the desk and test things from the outside. It's great for that. Great for gaming, great for a lot of other stuff too. 12 bucks a month, definitely worth it, and I am quite happy with my shadow server. All right, next up is DonorBox, which is what I use as a Patreon alternative. And a couple of years ago, Patreon was really starting to screw patrons by charging them credit card fees and all this crazy stuff, and I was losing patrons, and I wanted to find an alternative that was more fair to everybody, and I found DonorBox. Now, this is designed mostly for nonprofits to use to collect recurring donations, but they allow YouTubers to use it as well. It connects up with Stripe, so you pay whatever the Stripe credit card fees are, but it also supports PayPal, which is very convenient for viewers that want to contribute that way. Uh, DonorBox takes 1.5% of your total donations per month as a platform fee, which is by far the lowest amount that any of these platforms take. And I'm very happy with it. They manage all the recurring subscriptions and they allow the viewer to go in and manage it themselves. So if they want to give more or less or cancel, uh, they can do all of that uh, through its self-serve portal. Uh, a very good platform, especially if you've got a nonprofit that you're working for and you've been trying to find the right way to collect uh, subscriptions from uh, people that want to contribute. And for me, it's working out great as well. I still, again, support Patreon and YouTube membership programs and all the other stuff. But when people ask me, uh, which is the best platform to ensure the most amount of my money gets to you, the answer is always DonorBox. It is super simple to work with, and I am quite happy with it. I think I'm only paying about three bucks a month, and it's all based on what you all contribute. 
Next is the email marketing service I was using up until yesterday called Active Campaign. And I am so happy I did this video right now because I was about to get hit with my annual renewal fee and I could not believe how much this is starting to cost me. But let me show you what I'm doing for email because I very infrequently will send out an email to the email list that you all have subscribed to. I've got about 3,200 people on it right now. And this is what the email looks like. It's basically got a top portion here that I will compose manually. So this was the uh, live stream that we did on the front page of Amazon right before the holidays. And I wanted you all to know about it, so I wrote up some stuff here. And then below that, I have these uh, videos basically brought in from the RSS feeds from my two main YouTube channels, this one and the Extras channel. And what's cool about the footer section here is that Active Campaign supports RSS feeds and will automatically generate this lower portion of, the, of whatever I'm doing on the YouTube channel, which is great for letting you all know what I'm up to. And I haven't done all that much email blasting because I don't get a lot out of it. I don't see many people clicking in. So out of the 3,200 people that get the email, maybe 25 or 30 clicks actually get generated from one of these things. It's not substantial. And it's just not been something that I felt the need to really use a lot because it doesn't deliver results all that well. And for me, a result is getting somebody to click and watch a video. Uh, so I'm paying a lot for this. And the worst part is, is that uh, you, you are charged in like 2,500 subscriber increments. So before I was like under 2,500. And then once I got like one over, they start charging you for 5,000. Uh, so right now my list is about 3,200 or so. And on the light plan here, they're charging $79 a month billed annually. And I am not using this service at all, really. And there's a lot of stuff that it can do that I'm not using. It just seems like it's too much. And I really couldn't find anything that was similar that would cost any less. I guess I could go to MailChimp and pay a little bit less. But even that, $53 a month is a lot for something that I'm not using all that much. So this is one area where I'm probably going to go in a partial roll your own solution. And I found something uh, called Sendy. And this is something that you host on your web server. And it sends email through Amazon's web services. Because as you know, Amazon AWS has a lot of different services. I use a lot of them. And one of them happens to be the ability to send out email. And Sendy interfaces with that. And you can spend a lot less money sending the same amount of email. So for example, uh, the cost to send 10,000 emails through Amazon services using Sendy is about a dollar uh, versus you know, spending 75 or 55 or whatever amount per month for a uh, subscription to one of those other services. And because I send email out so infrequently, you know, on a per email basis makes a lot of sense to me, especially given how low my volume is. So this is a real winner if it works. Uh, Sendy costs about $69 for the software, and then you have to self-manage it. But because it's using Amazon for a, a bulk of the operation, I think it's probably a good trade-off here. So I'm going to look into that. The one thing it doesn't do, though, is automatically generate that RSS feed at the bottom. So I'm going to need to probably just pay somebody to code up a template for me that I could fill in with an HTML editor, paste it into the Sendy thing, and then blast the email out. We do send a lot more email for people who are subscribed to the store alert email for when we list things that I'm selling on my store. Uh, so that's something that I'm going to have to get working pretty quickly. Let me know what you think about that in the comments because I'm very curious about it. But I see no value to any of these email services given how much they cost based on what I use them for. And speaking of Amazon, I'm also an Amazon AWS user. We talked a little bit about how I'm backing up my Synology drive uh, to Amazon S3 in the video we did two weeks ago. That's the big purple section of my uh, monthly charge here, about $21. Uh, what I mentioned last time is that I'm going to be moving that back up off of here to uh, my personal Google Drive, and that'll save me some money. So that's going away soon. Uh, the green area here, though, is something we're using for the channel. This is Amazon Glacier. And that is a low-cost off-site storage mechanism for all of my finished YouTube videos. And it's kind of like my backup of last resort. So if an asteroid hits the house, uh, we can restore it from Glacier, but they do charge you quite a bit uh, for those restorations. 
Uh, this next one here is something that I uh, forgot about and I have now corrected, uh, which is the EC2 service. Because before I was using Shadow, I had a server I had set up in the cloud on EC2 uh, to try to get some of this remote window stuff working. But it wasn't as easy as the Shadow one was to get up and running because they do run Windows Server on Amazon, not Windows 10. So it does add some complexity. So this was the cost I was paying to store the data of those instances and then whatever uses that I had from them. Uh, so basically the red and the purple here are going away pretty soon and the green will remain. Uh, but Amazon's got some great services that if you are a low volume user of just about anything now, uh, it's definitely worth looking at. They even have their own streaming service that you can embed video streaming uh, onto your own website. So I've used that before for a few projects where streaming to YouTube didn't make sense. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff to check out on Amazon Web Services. Now, as I mentioned, I have employees that I have to pay every week, and I've been using Square Payroll for that. Uh, it's been a very good and seamless service for me because they handle all of the withholding. They file all my taxes, both state and federal. If I have any contractors that do work for me throughout the year, it gets the 1099s out to them as well. It is super easy. It's a, not that much money either. I'm paying about 35 bucks a month for paying uh, James and Jake. And then anytime I add a contractor or another employee or whatever, it's just an extra five bucks for those things. But this is an example of something that would usually take hours, uh, which is brought down to minutes by this service. And that is definitely worth it for me. So what I have to do every week is I just punch in the hours that they uh, work and hit the button and it takes the money out and does everything automatically versus having to do all of that myself. And I found Square to be the simplest and most affordable of all the different payroll systems that I was looking at based on what I needed it for. All right, next up is my web hosting provider, which is Media Temple. And I know the first thing you're going to say is, well, Lon, you don't have a website. And I kind of don't have a website, but I do have some things hosted on the lon.tv domain that I'll explain in a few minutes. And this is actually a really nice uh, service that I'm on because I share this with my old employer. Uh, they certainly have a more robust website than I do. They've got a lot of uh, customers that come in to look for product information on their site. So they get a pretty active amount of traffic every month. So we're on their managed level three server, which is far more than I would need on my own, uh, but it's definitely adequate for them and for me. And we're basically splitting the cost of this. And hopefully that will continue for a while because I'd hate to have to move everything. Uh, we recently got upgraded to this version of their level three server, which added a lot more RAM and more monthly bandwidth, but they gave us a perpetual discount uh, for sticking with them. So we actually end up paying less than we did before with more stuff, which was a great deal in my opinion. Uh, what I like about Media Temple is that I've been with them now for almost 10 years and I have very rarely had problems. And I can't say that for any other web hosting provider that I've been on before. So sometimes paying a little bit more is probably the better way to go. I have found that their uh, personal service has gone down a bit. Like if you have a little bit of a problem with something, they used to help you solve it. Now they want to charge you for that if it's your fault kind of thing. So I've, I've not been totally crazy with the direction their customer service has taken, but the service when it's working uh, is rock solid and, and again, much better than what I've experienced in other places. Now on that server, I host my store and this is something that I rolled myself. I'm using something called KubeCart, which is an open source shopping cart application for the store. And my store is very simple. It's got stuff, there's usually one of everything, and I just need to have a place to put it so you all can find it and buy it. Uh, it supports Stripe and PayPal, so that's been working great. And it just works, it's been really, really good. And it's something that I was able to install automatically through the Media Temple back end. And it solved a lot of problems for me because I didn't want to go out and spend like, you know, X number of dollars a month on Shopify or some other thing that uh, I'm not using all that much and has very low volume, just kind of like the email thing I talked about a few minutes ago. And KubeCart has been excellent for that. So I'm really, really happy with how that's working. Uh, for shipping, I use PayPal's shipping thing. And if you click on the link that you see here while you're logged into your PayPal account, you get access to their shipping system, which gives you access to the postal service and UPS here in the US. And that's been really, really good for me. You get a little bit of a discount on both. 
I have found this is the easiest way to generate a USPS label and probably an easier way to generate a UPS label versus the UPS website. So PayPal has been great for shipping. I also related to that uh, pay for a mailbox that I rent at one of these local mailbox places in my town. Uh, it's a great place. I got some great people behind the desk and I have my packages shipped there so that they don't sit outside the house here where somebody can grab them. So uh, we get a lot of computers and stuff shipped to me, of course. It goes to them. It's nice and secure there. And then I go by and pick it up uh, every couple of days when I get out of the house, which is not that frequently anymore. Uh, another thing that I host on my web server is the URLs URL shortener. This is awesome. This is an open source application. It's Y-O-U-R-L-S, as you can see. And it provides a lot of neat data that I can use to determine what's worth covering on the channel. Because if I upload something to the Extras channel and I see a lot of clicks to its affiliate link, then I know that that's a product that a lot of you have interest in. And that might bump it up in the list of things that I need to do uh, in the coming week to review on the channel. So I really like using this URL shortener. What's nice is that every link that I share can be personalized with my domain branding, right? Lon.tv slash whatever. Uh, it's a great tool, and if you have a website and wanted to do your own URL shortening, it is super easy to install, totally free because it's open source, and it works great and allows you to brand every one of your short links that you send out to other people. So definitely check out URLs at URLs.org. Uh, to get one of your own going there. And that is pretty much it for the list of subscriptions and services that I am currently using. I'd love to get your feedback uh, down in the comments below for things that you're using that I should maybe take a look at, especially things that might be good open source alternatives. And I'd love to get again some feedback on the email systems that you might be encountering because I really do need to keep blasting email, but not for 400 and something bucks a year. And as usual, this week's wrap up is being brought to you by all of you. And I want to thank Eric's Variety Channel, Toys Are For Boys, and Joshua Cardona, who contributed during one of my recent live streams via Super Chat. We also have some new supporters on the channel who contributed via the YouTube membership program. They are Tracy Knuckles and Shankar the Fifth. So thank you very much for everyone who contributed this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who watch on a regular basis too because all of those things equal channel growth. And if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and check out that donor box thing I was just talking about. There you can make a monthly or a one-time contribution to the channel. But we also support things like Patreon and the YouTube membership program. And we're also on Floatplane. You can check out some of my other channels that you can see up here on the screen. Definitely go to my Amazon shop if you haven't already and follow me there because we are doing some Amazon exclusive streams every once in a while. And I don't want you to miss that. You can engage with the channel through my email list, which will be switching over to something else pretty soon. By the way, what's great about having that URL shortener is that I don't have to change my URLs when I move to something else. I can just point that thing at some other place. And that is what we'll be doing when we move to the new email provider. And you can also sign up for my store alert email to see whenever we add something to that cube cart store at lon.tv slash store alert. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Thank you all for your suggestions for this episode. Hopefully you found it of interest. Let me know what else you would like to see similar to this in the future because I am always looking for topics to share with you during my weekly, weekly wrap up videos every Monday right here on the channel. That's gonna do it for now. We got some fun stuff coming up this week on the channel. And until next time, this is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, Frank Lewandowski, Mark Bollinger, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.